What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's Daniel and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be telling you my top 10 favorite 2021 NASCAR Cup Series drivers. Let's go and just jump straight into it. Starting off in the number 10 position, we have Matt Benedetto, who currently drives the number 21 for Wood Brothers Racing. I really like Matt Benedetto's story. I've really liked him since around 2016 when he was able to finish in the top 10, I believe 7th position or 6th position for BK Racing at Bristol Motor Speedway. On top of that, in 2019 for Levine Family Racing, he almost ended up winning at Bristol against Denny Hamlin, but he's never really had that opportunity. But at his time at Wood Brothers, I will say that he has been absolutely fantastic. Though that being said, his story of where he's gotten from is what has made me intriguing. It does suck that next year, as of right now, Matt Vendo does not have a ride for 2022. Again, there still is time for him to potentially get a ride going into the 2020 season, but his future really is uncertain at the moment. That being said, I really like Matt Benedetto's personality. He's been really, really fun to watch over the last couple of years, and I hope he gets to run next year, but he is a currently number 10 on my list, and hopefully he'll get another opportunity going forward. In the number 9 position, we have the currently the number 1 driver of the 1 car for Chip Ganassi Racing, Kurt Busch. Kurt Busch I used to not be a fan of, especially when I became a fan of the sport back in 2007-2008. I despise Kurt Busch because of his whiny personality, and I wasn't a big fan of his personality, especially in the beginning. Especially back in 2011, I despise Kurt Busch. But over the last couple of years, especially since about 2014, 2015, when he started driving for Stuart Haas Racing, I started growing a lot more accustomed to Kurt Busch as a driver. And I began to realize that Kurt Busch himself is a much better driver himself and knows how to get it done on the racetrack and he continues to prove it on a week by week basis and in not the best equipment overall he's been able to prove himself especially in 2012 where he basically lost everything after going to team penske he lost everything after his spats and he repaired his career overall and he's gotten a lot better with the media which i respect that a lot and he's proven why he is a nascar all fair plus he's a champion and he knows how to get it done behind the wheel and knows how to get it done on the racetrack as well to me, Kurt Busch continues to do that, and he's most likely next year going to 2311 Racing, which I think he'll really do great, especially in that equipment. And I think that we're going to see a lot of great things going forward for Kurt Busch, especially in the latter state of his career. He deserves to be in NASCAR Hall of Fame. He's done a lot of great things in his career, and currently sits number 9 on my list. In the number 8 position, we have the driver of the number 99 for Trackhouse Racing, Daniel Suarez. Daniel Suarez, about a year or two ago, wasn't even on this list. But there's a lot of reasons why I like Daniel Suarez. Number one, I think he has repaired his career. He won a 2016 NASCAR Xfinity Series Championship for Joe Gibbs Racing. And really for the last couple of years, Daniel Suarez really did not do much at his time with Joe Gibbs Racing SHR. But I think what we realized is he wasn't the main guy at Sewer Haas Racing or Joe Gibbs Racing. He was basically the fourth fiddle. And you have to remember in his rookie year as well, his, he had a couple crew chief changes, if I remember correctly, at that time, he originally was supposed to have Chris Graves, or remember that name, Scott Graves, I think was originally supposed to be his crew chief, but they kept changing up his crew chiefs, it seemed like every single year, and he absolutely struggled. That being said, Daniel Suarez at Trackhouse Racing, I really like what this team has been doing, the combination of Justin Marr, him driving for Justin Marr's organization, and on top of that, the paint scheme that they've had have been really, really awesome, and I mean, go to back to Bristol Dirt with Trackhouse Racing, he had a chance to win that race, and keep that in mind, he's been almost more competitive at Trackhouse Racing this year. Then he had been with Joe Gibbs Racing or Sewer Haas Racing. So to me, I think Daniel Suarez is an awesome driver. He's proven himself, and I think that he'll be a great person for the future of this sport. In the number seven position, we have the number driver of the number 24, 400 Motorsports, William Byron. I've liked William Byron for a very, very long time, since 2016, when he started driving for KBM in the number nine truck. And remember, in 2016, he dominated that season, only to lose out on his run for this championship due to his engine blowing up at Phoenix. And if that does not happen, he goes on and wins the championship. He dominated in 2016. In 2017, he moved up to the NASCAR Xfinity Series and went on to win the championship as a rookie. Then jumped up the Cup Series in 2018, absolutely struggled. We have to remember that he was only 18 or 19, like 19 or 20 years old at the time. So he was really, really young. But this year, especially in 2021, he has really, really grown on me, especially him and Rudy Fiegel. They have worked together very, very well. And I know that he doesn't have the greatest personality overall, but the reason I really like William Byron is because of his driving talent and what he's been able to do. And I think for years to come, we're going to see a lot more out of William Byron, especially what he's been able to give out on the racetrack. He's done a lot of awesome things out there, and I think that he'll continue to prove why he deserves to be a NASCAR champ one day. I do think that one of these days, 
we're going to see him win a NASCAR Cup Series championship. I don't know exactly when that's going to happen, by the way, but I do think as time goes on, we're going to see William Byron winning the NASCAR Cup Series championship. And it could be this year for all we know, especially if he's able to make it to the Final Four and he's able to win a couple more races, get some more playoff points. We could see him contending for the championship, but William Byron currently sits number seven on my list. In the number six position, we have the driver of the number 48 car for Hendrick Motorsports, Alex Bowman. I have been a big fan of Alex Bowman since 2016, really since his time with Junior when he drove for in substitute for Dale Earnhardt Jr. And I have to remember 2016, he went on and almost won in the number 88 car at Phoenix before having issues late in the race, getting involved in a rate, rate, wreck late in the race with Matt Kenza. But he dominated the race, leading like 100 laps in that event, and he was really, really fast. In 2017, he ran one Cup Series race for them. It, it's a substitution for Dale Earnhardt Jr. when Dale Earnhardt uh, Jr. commented actually for Fox during the clash and almost won that event. Of course, he and Kyle was really did not get along in that event. But since this time running full-time for the team, of course, another big reason why I like Alex Bowman is because he's it he basically came in because of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Dale Jr. can see talent. I've been a big fan of Dale Earnhardt Jr. as well as a commentator and also driver as well. But Alex Bowman's an awesome driver. And also his personality, not to mention, has really, really improved. A lot of people thought that Alex Bowman did not have a really, really good personality. But he has a funny sense of humor and a funny personality, on the, especially on the radio. If you hear him on the radio, he's absolutely funny to listen to. But not only that, he knows how to drive a stock car. He scored three victories this year so far in the 2021 season. Those coming at Dover, Richmond, and Pocono. And he has a chance to maybe have a shot if he's able to continue his consistency. He has a very strong possibility of making it to the Final Four this year, especially a lot of playoff points he has. He has a chance to run very, very well. And I really like Alex Bowman a lot. In the number five position currently, the driver of the number 23 for 2311 Racing, we have Bubba Walls in fifth position. Now, a lot of one people are going to be really, say, of controversial because I've been a little bit hard on Bubba Walls this year. That being said, I have been a big fan of Bubba Walls really since his time at Kyle Busch Motorsports. And the reason I've liked him is he actually does have quite a bit of talent. You look at his time at Kyle Busch Motorsports in 2014, almost won the championship that season, was really, really competitive, and won quite a few races for the team overall and had a lot of speed in those events as well. He went over to Roush in 2015, and while he didn't win races for the couple years he was at Roush Jimmy Racing, he actually was really, really competitive. And in some of those races where the Cup Series drivers did run, he would have won those events if the Cup drivers had not been in those events. One race to look back is 2017 at Dover, where he had one of the best cars in that event. Now, his time in the Cup Series has not been that good, but you have to remember he joined Rich Penny Motorsports at the time, where the team really saw her falling off, especially after Smithfield fell. He got an opportunity this year to go over 2311 racing, and like I said, his rook, his first year with that team has not been very good. We had really high expectations for Bubba Walls, but you have to remember it is a first-year team, and we really gave him incredible expectations, which we could have given them overall realistic expectations. Now, I think that Bubba Walls going into year number number two in 2022, I think he'll be better. And also his publicity, of course, a lot of people know what he happened in last year, that situation with the Confederate flag and stuff. But Bubba Wallace is a face for the sport, and I think that long-term he'll do maybe some great things. I think he has potential to win a couple NASCAR Cup Series races over time and be a solid contender as time goes on. I really like Bubba Walls. In the number four position, we have the driver of the number 12 car for Team Penske, Ryan Blaney. I've been a big fan of Ryan Blaney for a long time. I've been a big fan of Ryan Blaney since about 2012 or 2013 when I realized this kid could drive, especially his time with BK Racing back in 2013 and 2014 as well. Almost contended for the championship in 2014 as well in the truck series, winning quite a few races in those respective seasons. Now, his time up in the Cup Series, he hasn't really done a lot except winning five races. I mean, five wins for someone is respectable, but he's won one race every single year. Again, he is in Team Penske equipment. Don't get me wrong, you should be forming a little bit better, but I do think that he's gotten better as time has gone on. I think Ryan Blaney is a very solid driver, plus his personality is really, really funny. He has a great sense of humor, especially him and Bubba Wallace are together. They both gel together and have incredible personalities, and to me, I like Ryan Blaney a lot, and I think that he's a good driver overall for the sport, and I really like his personality. And again, you can have a dry sense of humor, but he's got a really good sense of humor. He's really, really funny. And when you have a good sense of humor, plus you actually can drive a race car, that really is a good combination overall, in my honest opinion. In the number three position, we have the driver of the 19 car for Joe Gibbs Racing, Martin Truex Jr. Now, a lot of you are wondering why Martin Truex Jr. is so high up on my list. 
And the reason I have Martin Trix Jr. up on the list is not because over the recent couple years, but I thought Martin Trix Jr. really got kind of screwed in 2013 with the whole Toyota debacle. He really wasn't involved in that whole Toyota situation when that whole situation happened in 2013. He also was so underrated. We used to all root for him back in 2013. And when he went over to Furniture Racing and started winning races, especially in 2015, when he won at Pocono, I was extremely happy. I was at my grandmother's house at the time, and I was super happy to see Mark Trick Jr. go out there and win that event. And then he started winning races in 2016. In 2017, when he won the, the Cup Series Championship in deserving fashion, I was super pumped. I was jumping up for joy, screaming when he won that championship. And the reason is I've looked up to a guy like Mark Trick Jr., a guy that had to work hard throughout his career, a driver who proved himself in the Bush Series at the time of the Bush Series, now the Xfinity Series, proved himself there and has gone to the Cup Series, has worked his butt off and done a lot of great things. I think Cole Perrin definitely has helped him, don't get me wrong, but I really like Mark Trick Jr. a lot and what he's been able to do as a NASCAR Cup Series driver, and I think that he'll be a NASCAR Hall of Famer one day, in my honest opinion. In the second position and in the runner-up position, we have the driver of the number nine car for Hedrick Motorsports, Chase Elliott. I have been a big fan of Chase Elliott since his time going up to the Cup Series and even the Xfinity Series. And the biggest reason is Bill Elliott. And not to mention, my father was a really big fan of Bill Elliott as well because my dad was a big fan of the four Thunderbirds. So, of course, he rooted for Bill Elliott. And a lot of the Dale Jr. fan base has gone over to Chase Elliott as well. That being said, Chase Elliott is a generational talent. He won the 2020 NASCAR Cup Series Championship. He also won the 2014 NASCAR Xfinity Series Championship as well, along with winning so far 13 career NASCAR Cup Series races and one of the most talented drivers we have seen. You used to call him Choke Elliott in the first couple years, but since winning that first career race, he's proven why he's been able out there. Yes, he hasn't had a very doesn't have an amazing personality over on it's something he does have to work on as he gets older, but he's proven it out on the racetrack and why he's one of the most popular drivers out there. Not just because he's good for the fans, has an incredible fan base, but because he's a great driver. And I've been a big fan of the Hendrick Motorsports plan for a long time. And seeing Chase Elliott succeed as much as he has has been really, really incredible. And he currently sits in the second position on my list. And now we're jumping up to the first and final position on my list. My current favorite NASCAR driver in the NASCAR Cup Series is the driver of the number five car for Hendrick Motorsport, the HendrickCars.com Chevy, Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson has basically been my favorite driver since his time coming up to Cup. Since Tony Stewart retired in 2016 and Carl Edwards retired in 2016, Kyle Larson has been my favorite driver. And the reason is this, when I really became a fan of Kyle Larson, watching him in 2012 at Homestead, pretty much dominate that event, had the car to be, unfortunately got taken out late in the race in an incident with Ty Dillon. But what I realized is Kyle Larson is potentially the best thing we have seen since Jeff Gordon. I really think he has. And the reason is the guy can win in any sort of racing series. He can win in sports cars, won the 2015 Rolex 24. He can win on sprint cars, has won the Chili Bowl, win in midgets. He can seem to win anything. If you give him a really, really good car, he can take it the next step. And I've been wanting for a long time for him to get a really, really awesome opportunity. And he finally really got that opportunity this year going to Hedger Motorsports. And he's taken it and has not stopped. He's been one of the best drivers so far this year. I really did not expect that. But seeing him win in Vegas and seeing him winning a lot of races, every time I, he wins, I get extremely excited seeing him go to victory lane. And I know that he, he has a pretty decent personality overall. And he has had to fight back through a ton of adversity. And a lot of people like myself have loved his journey back into this sport. And just his incredible talent. And I've respected what he's been able to do. And he's, I think that he's a guy that can eventually win a NASCAR Cup Series championship. He can, for all we know, this year in 2021, win the NASCAR Cup Series championship. But Kyle Larson continues to do a lot of awesome things in our sport, and I think that he'll be a future sensation, and he currently is in the first position on my list. So now before we close out the video, let's take a look at the honorable mentions who just barely missed the list. The first one is Kyle Busch. I used to hate Kyle Busch with a burning passion. I did not like Kyle Busch for a long time. But really, I started liking Kyle Busch a lot more around 2015 during his injury and his incredible comeback in 2015. And for the first time in my time as a fan of NASCAR, I supported Kyle Busch's incredible comeback. 
And ever since then, I started liking Kyle Busch. And, of course, his funny. He's been funny to watch this summer with the KFB summer. That's been really, really funny to watch. And you want to hate a guy like Kyle Busch, especially with how frustrated he can be at points and whining at points. They didn't like him for his 2011 Truck Series incident. But Kyle Busch is a great driver. He's an absolute talent. He's an absolutely deserving to be a NASCAR Hall of Famer. He's a two-time NASCAR Cup Series champion. And he's awesome to watch. The second driver who just barely missed this list is Tyler Reddick. I like Tyler Reddick a lot. Tyler Reddick is a guy that's taking the best out of his equipment. He won a cha two championships in Xfinity 2018 for Junior Motorsports and 2019 RSCR. And has been one of the most impressive up-and-coming drivers over the last couple years. And the guy's also got a good personality as well, not to mention that. I really like him a lot, and he shares a lot that I think that we could see going forward. I think he could be a guy that wins a lot of NASCAR Cup Series races. I think he is the next most likely driver to win the first career race, especially how good of his performance that been. I think the wins are coming for Tyler Reddick. I really think they are. The third driver that barely missed this list is Christopher Bell. I like Christopher Bell a lot. I will say the reason he's not on the list right now is because this year he has not been that great. Except winning once at Daytona. Real course, having a couple strong runs. He has been absolutely fantastic. That being said, though, if you look at Chris Rebell and see what he's been able to do, he's been fun to watch, especially Nick Finney, and I love his background. He's not got the greatest personality, but one thing I can respect about Chris Rebell is his respect to the media. He gives as much respect to the media as possible, and that's one thing I really, really like about Chris Rebell, not to mention he's a great driver as well. And the final driver that barely made the cut for this list is a driver of the number 42 car currently for Chip Ganassi Racing, Ross Chastain. Ross Chastain I've been a big fan of, especially seeing him finally get an opportunity to ride for Chip Ganassi Racing back in 2018. He went on and won, and he's been a driver that used to be in underfund equipment and really did not did the best with what he could do with very little. And he came into this series, proved himself, and has gone out there and been a contender. I know this year started off a little bit rocky, but I do think that he's a guy again, that can long-term be good for the sport going forward, in my honest and sincere opinion. So, those are my top 10 favorite NASCAR Cup Series drivers. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe to the channel, turn on the to notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Twitter, Face, and Instagram. Support page on the link description below for that, and comment below your top 10 list below. Who are your current top 10 NASCAR Cup Series drivers? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video, and I'll see you guys next time for some more great, awesome NASCAR content later on the channel. Take care, everybody.